Hey, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art Kirsch and I are with the fabulous Bill Jordan. <laughs> Hey, I was Bill, I was waiting for fabulous. I haven't heard fabulous in so long. You guys are the only ones who ever referenced me as fabulous. Wow, you Thank deserve you. it, believe me. Thank you. I know Art agrees. I absolutely agree. As a matter of fact, we have a fabulous Bill Jordan, and we have a not so fabulous Bill Jordan, but he spells his name Owen. So <laughs> we don't we don't have him on at all. Gotcha. We only have a gotcha. fabulous one on. But speaking of fabulous Bill Jordan. Uh, oftentimes we refer to the 15 principles. In fact, you've written a book about it, the 15 principles. Yes. Um, looking like uh, this. 15, oh, it's yeah, 15 time. actually, I call them practices uh, because they take practice and will never perfect them. So that's just, I'm being a nitpicker, but they're no, actually no, called well, practices. Okay, okay. Because, and you can get away with that because you're the fabulous Phil Jordan. And uh, <laughs> who, who's a nitpick on that? But one of the ones uh, that I was recently looking at was the golden rule. Yeah. And number three, and I don't know that we've ever discussed that one in depth as we have the others. Maybe we have, but how did you right. come up with that as one of your practices? Well, you know, the golden rule. We, you know, when people see in the book, there's a there's a there's a practice called the golden rule, and we all think, well, you know, of course, I, we've heard that all of our lives. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and that's a really good. That's a really good thing. And especially from uh, casual acquaintances or maybe strangers on the street, being nice to me and me being nice to them is a very good thing. I like to hold doors for people. If somebody, you know, if they got a good rolling shopping cart, here you go. It's a good roller. You like this one. You know, use this one around the store. So that's a, that's a good thing. But what in this particular practice, what I'm talking about is wanting a little bit more from the people who are closer to me. Uh, from close friends and trusted friends and uh, really trusted family members, I want more and I want honesty from them. I want people who care enough about me and I want to care enough about others that when we see each other getting a little off the rails in whatever way that may be, that we will say out of love and respect and concern, hey, do you, here's what I'm seeing. You Are you meaning to do this? Are you aware that you are saying these kinds of things? Are you aware that you've been very negative lately? Are you aware that you're not smiling as much? Are you okay? That's what I'm talking about. Not just being nice. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. I've got a few friends, again, very trusted friends. We've talked about this before that you've got friends and then you may have trusted friends. And it's tough when you find out that your trusted friends may not be as trusted. Uh, you can't trust them quite as much as you think. But I've got some friends that will go and have coffee or lunch or something, and we don't even have to say it anymore, but we know that there has been a request for the cone of silence. And you remember yeah. the, the get smart bit where Maxwell Smart as secret agent 86 for control would meet with the with chief. Right. And they'd be talking about something that was super duper secret. And Max would say, Chief, I think this calls for the cone of silence. And he's, oh, Max, not the cone of silence. And then the cone of silence descends two giant like plexiglass domes that cover each of them. And they start talking. And then, of course, because it is the cone of silence, neither can hear the other one speak. Yeah. Uh, it was a great comedy bit. And if you ever saw it, I mean, it's just a total classic. But we will call it the cone of silence. And each of us, my friend and I, will know that whatever is said under the cone of silence goes no further. Yeah. I mean, nowhere. And I've been able to unload. We call it, I just verbally vomit all over them. Or they'll verbally vomit all over me if it's something that's on their minds or hearts or souls. Um, and there's no real judgment. And if there is judgment, it's kind of done... Uh, shall we say, not brutally, but I mean, I've got a good friend and I was just laying it all out to him. And he's like, listen to yourself. You sound like a crazy person. <laughs> and I still remember that, but he said that out of love and concern for me. And so he could see, you know, what I was talking about. And there's never a judgment. There's never a, you know, you're, you're wrong to be thinking that, you know, um, but sometimes it helps to get that out. By the way, when I said he didn't do it in a brutal way, and I bring this up in the book, here's a here's a, a tip from me to you, and this is a hard-earned tip, 
at least this is in my experience, whenever you encounter anybody who is very openly and, and seemingly happy to tell you that they can be brutally honest. Oh yeah. Oh, I can be brutally honest. Yeah. You need to be you need to be very uh, aware because I find that these people tend to be far more proud of the brutality than of the honesty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and I am I am I am being serious. So, so be you're, careful so, with those. But you need I think we all need friends that you can just unload on, but we also need to be able to take a friend aside and go, hey, look, you're you're not acting like yourself. And and sometimes it takes that to to re, to to reel us in. My wife will say, "Are you okay? You haven't been doing this lately. You haven't been mm. doing this. You haven't done that." And I'm and I'm not even aware of it, right? Yeah. So we need friends like that, and that's what I see as the golden rule, and really looking out for each other. Right, and that's really a two way street, uh, as I was sure. interpreting it. Uh, uh, it's one thing for you to be able to do that because you understand the practice, but it's another one to treasure somebody who. It's your friend say, hey, Bill, you, are you sure you're okay? Because you're messing up here. Absolutely. You're, you're insult yeah. Did you realize you're insulting somebody? Well, Bill, what I like, uh, what I like about your book and the 15 practices is that there are 15 great rules to live by, practices. But you take the time to explain and philosophize and really put them into perspective just as you did number three for us. And that's, well, that's I appreciate what that. makes this valuable. I appreciate that. And it's, you know, again, it's simple stuff and it's certainly not like a war and peace, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, you can read this if you, you know, get a cup of coffee or two and you can easily read through this in an hour, but I've heard from women who keep it in their purse. Uh, people keep it in their bathroom. I don't care. A nightstand end table. And, it, and I do, truly, I read, and I, so I don't know how many times I've read my own book, but I will go through and read a practice a day and just rotate through them yeah. and just repeat because yeah. they are practices. So, for example, no matter how many times I'll say, uh, you know, calm is contagious, right? calm is a superpower, which is number 10, there are still days when I just, man, I've got a short fuse and and I'm able to catch myself. Uh, a little better than I used to, uh, but that is something I really struggle with: is staying calm and staying patient. And yeah. this, my, um, I hate to say it, I mean, it, it sounds egocentric, but my own book has helped me. Just well, all, about it. all fifteen of your practices are really valuable, so I recommend the book. Okay, I by, by, by the way, by the way, as a shameless plug, you can get these on Amazon. Yep. Build your, build your you can get it on Amazon. You can go to BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com and you can order the book there. And also you can get uh, this 15 ounce mug. It's not a cup, obviously. I mean, this thing is pretty big. Holds 15 ounces of whatever you want to put in it. And uh, that also, I use this in the morning because I drink coffee every morning. This kind of anchors my day and my whole philosophy of embrace the boom. Be glad of where I am. There's a lot of people who aren't here anymore. I still yeah. am. So I should rejoice and and be thankful for that. Hey, and that's why we love you, Bill. We all want to enjoy what we have. Absolutely. Hey, as I say, live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. Embrace the boom. Amen. Embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.